In tonight's Community Connection, we're taking a look at how the Brandon area came to be. While Brandon has been a symbol of sprawl over the last decade, the community has been around since the Civil War. That's when John Brandon and his wife moved to the area, then known as New Hope. They had seven kids. After John Brandon died, his second wife, Victoria, had their massive orange grove surveyed so they could be built into a new city. She also created the area's first post office, becoming Brandon's first postmaster in 1890. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, well, the uh, incredible growth in eastern and southern Hillsborough County, it is easy to overlook our fascinating past. This area became known as the carnival capital of the world. Just to our south in Riverview, you'll find the Showman's Museum. It's a time capsule of the colorful and at times controversial history of carnivals. We're kind of bad about the way we treat our history. In a sea of sprawling subdivisions, you'll find a part of Hillsborough County history that is buried. There are probably a lot of forgotten grave sites, especially in this area. An overgrown cemetery where you see a small gravestone for a giant of a man who left a towering mark on the midway. And voila! It's a museum that pays homage to performers of the past. It is a history of traveling shows, carnivals, circuses, wild west shows, patent medicine shows. We like to say anything having to do with the tented world. 1903 Condorman Ferris wheel. It's all been donated. We don't purchase any of these artifacts. It's a 1950 Alan Herschel American Beauty Carousel. At one time, America had over 2,000 carousels turning in this country. Most of this stuff is irreplaceable. It's one of a kind. This was Daisy May, the two-nosed cow, America's oldest cotton candy machine. You can't put a dollar amount on this. 100 years ago, Gibsonton became the carnival capital of the world. We used to call it Gibtown. People used to say, oh, don't go to Gibtown after dark. Those carnival people will steal your children. And we perpetuated the myth because we didn't want them down here anyway, you know. Among those who found a home here, Al and Jeannie Tomaney, sideshow performers billed as the world's strangest couple. Al advertised as eight feet, four inches tall. His wife, Jeannie, just two and a half feet. Well, this was an area where people of any stripe could come. One time there were 138 human oddities in this town. They also found a home here where they could live amongst each other and not be ostracized by the outlying communities. And everybody's heard of the Tilt-A-Whirl. Decades before he curated the Showman's Museum, Doc Rivera also found a home in the carnival. I had no parents. Uh, my grandparents raised me. At 14, when the carnival came to town, uh, Laporte, Indiana, set up on the streets of Laporte, when it tore down, I went with them. I've done everything in this business. I've worked concessions. I even owned a carnival at one time, which I equate to the second stage of insanity. Today, the insanity is on full display. You would see the Joey Chitwood's automobiles jump over ramps. It was the Wild West of entertainment, even Wild West shows. Through this 54,000 square foot museum. You cannot separate the history of America from the history of the traveling shows. The show goes on for Doc Rivera. I love it. It's in my blood. This business attracts characters. And I love characters. Boy, it, it was really fun to take a step back in time there. The Showman's Museum, by the way, open every Saturday and Sunday from noon to five. Interesting place.